Here are photos of bathrooms from the late 19th century. Did you know our bathrooms used to be covered and filled mostly with wood? In fact, whole houses looked vastly different in the 19th century. And sure, while home design obviously evolves with time and technology, pandemics played a huge role in shaping our modern spaces. Designers did away with hard to clean and germ hoarding surfaces in bathrooms, leading us closer to the sanitized look we share in bathrooms today. But it's more than just bathrooms. Look around your home and you will see features in every room that were shaped by disease. So come along as we take a tour of the modern home to see what has changed and what might change in a post-COVID-19 world. The mid to late 1800s was a time of unparalleled industrial progress, but it was also a time of overcrowded urban spaces and unregulated pollution. Pandemics were commonplace. Cholera, smallpox, typhus, and yellow fever swept through the world's cities. In response, the era also became a time of unparalleled medical advancement, and perhaps none had more of an effect on our homes than germ theory and the antiseptic revolution. These discoveries sparked a hygiene revolution in what was believed to be the dirtiest part of the home, the bathroom. At the time, most things in the bathroom, from bathtubs to toilets, were encased in wood to hide their true purpose, both for privacy and smell reasons. But more on smell in just a little bit. These Victorian style wooden cases made everything in a bathroom look like furniture. But by today's standards, there were some obvious issues. First and foremost, Wood harbors moisture, which means more germs and more bacteria growth. Second, the Victorian style furniture was difficult to clean, a common theme in architectural home changes throughout the 19th century. Also, a side note, most of the changes we're about to see in the bathroom, as well as in the rest of the house, were only available to the wealthy. In addition to wooden covers, wooden toilet seats were phased out in favor of porcelain ones around the time of the influenza pandemic. When toilets were first brought into the home, they had water tanks above the toilet, but soon they were phased out due to the extra cleaning. Our sinks followed suit. They adopted a porcelain design, the ends were turned down, and the new sinks were not attached to the walls behind them unlike previous models. This allowed for someone to clean both the tiled walls as well as the rear of the sink. As for functionality above the sink, toothbrush and soap holders were popularized during the sanatorium decor era during the height of tuberculosis for how sanitized they looked and how well they kept everything separate. For those sharp listeners, yes, tiled walls came into our bathrooms during pandemics. The decorative wallpaper that adorned much of our homes prior was found to be the perfect breeding ground for a variety of bacteria and mold once moisture seeped through. The subway tile that is oh so popular in bathrooms today not only gave a sanitized look to our bathrooms, but was easy to clean. Tiles also replace wooden floors for similar reasons. Bathtubs initially were wooden and fitted with a molded metal sheet of either copper or zinc. Of course, the wood was soon replaced with porcelain, which ushered in the age of the standing bathtub. If you've ever wondered why those ornate claw-footed tubs faded into antiquity, it's partly due to how hard they were to clean. Cleaning all four sides of the tub, the inside, each foot, and working around the bottom of the tub proved to be too troublesome, especially during a time when people thought disease could be spread anywhere. This hygiene revolution was so powerful that it introduced new rooms altogether. Take the powder room for example. The half bathroom became popular during the 1918 influenza outbreak. The wealthy began installing them in their homes so guests could use something that wasn't the family bath. After all, outside people means outside contagions. That just about sums up the bathroom. Now let's waltz down to our next stop in this pandemic home tour. The kitchen. Kitchens are places to connect, to eat, and to make memories, but also a place where germs are everywhere. So amidst this hygiene revolution, designers began looking for inspiration to apply. And for that, we can look toward yet another pandemic, tuberculosis. The often gruesome infectious disease primarily attacks the lungs, causing the patient to cough up blood-laden mucus and eventually wither away. In 1890s London, around half of the deaths between those 18 to 35 were caused by tuberculosis. And the common treatment at the time? Sunlight and fresh air. Tuberculosis patients were treated in places called sanatoriums, 
large, often open-aired and well-lit medical facilities with trademarks of sanatoriums being large windows, balconies, flat surfaces, and bright paint. It's no surprise that sanatorium design soon became popular in residential homes. Kitchens quickly adopted the large windows and flat surfaces seen in sanatoriums. The added light was believed to kill germs, and of course help the sick recover faster. Add bright or white paint in a kitchen, and sunlight bounces off every surface, be it the light walls, the tiles, or a flat countertop. The flat countertops themselves grew in popularity in a similar way to bathrooms. The decline in ornate furniture and harder to clean surfaces paved the way for the flat and clean countertops of today. Let's move on to the next room in our pandemic house tour. While we're on the topic of sunlight and fresh air, we have to touch on a room that became an addition to houses following the sanatorium style of decor. Sleeping porches or day rooms were additions to homes due to their natural light and fresh air that they provided, and still provide today. Let's now move on to the bedroom not only one of the more intimate sections of our home, but one that we spend countless time in, especially during quarantine or times of distress. Bedrooms are places of sanctuary, and as diseases spread, architecture and decor in the bedroom adapted to preserve that feeling of safety. For one, bed frames became taller and higher as to further separate the bed from the ground. This was done namely to keep away rats and insects that spread disease. Additionally, bed frames changed from wooden to iron and brass headboards. Wood, similar to that in the bathroom, poured in moisture and was generally difficult to clean. Now, in the vein of storage, you might wonder what happened to those ornate armoires, such as the one in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Once again, this is another case of the classic wood is hard to clean argument. In response, built-in closets became commonplace as they made rooms easier to clean. As you can see, key features that have become staples of their respective rooms haven't always been there. And for most, you can thank pandemics. These key features have remained relatively unchanged for the past half century or so. This is in part due to the medical advancements that have prevented other major pandemics from occurring. But in early 2020, this all changed. A post-COVID-19 world seems uncertain and wary, but experts are developing new design features that could help us adapt to the new world. For one, we might see a rise in the sanatorium style of decorating in the home to promote cleanliness. That means more focus on natural light and fresh air in the home. Bright surfaces and lights make grime easy to see and promote that cleanliness. After the fiasco of panic buying toilet paper and scarcity of products, Americans may opt for bidet attachments, opting for a more sustainable post-bathroom cleanup. Other changes in the home might come in a similar fashion to modernist architecture of the early 1900s. I think we might return to the era where the sink is in the front hall. You come in, you take off your shoes, you wash your hands, continue into the house. Architecture in the home in a post-coronavirus world may go to lengths to ensure that the outside world stays separate from the indoors. Natural linoleum is actually antibacterial, so the healthiest and best floor that you can do is natural 150-year-old design of linoleum. That means a heavy emphasis on sanitation in the home, sinks and vestibules, and a revamped feel to bathrooms to minimize germ spread. We're going to see the end of sort of cheap, crappy drywall. We're going to see better drywall that is a fiberglass face so that you can actually wash it and it doesn't get mold. Housing is going to get a little more expensive because all of the cheap plastic and the cheap drywall, people are going to want stuff that's slightly better, I think. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our new content.